So today we're gonna do some sea and spray work, not in the red machine that's not gone yet. Um, but it doesn't have sea and spray. Both of our other machines, they do have a sea and spray. One's a Weed It and the one's a John Deere branded sea and spray. So I'm out here scouting some fields. We did catch two and a half inches of rain in this field a couple days ago. Just trying to see if it's too wet to run. And if you can see it, it's pretty slimy still. But this is what we're chasing. This is called candy grass. There's also a couple other grasses out here. Sandbirds is one. That's a horrible one. The other one is witchgrass. Can't control that. Can't spray that. So it is what it is. So being that it's too wet here, we're gonna go west and check the other end of the farm. This is the east end. We'll go west where the other sprayer is sitting. It's about, oh, I suppose 35 miles west. Another sprayer is sitting out there ready to go. I have a feeling it'll go. So we'll get ready, get spraying, and maybe by this afternoon, come back here and hit this stuff. So the whole point of what we're doing now is we're getting ready to drill winter wheat. So this is all of our fallow ground. It's been sitting idle all year. So the goal is to get this cleaned up as soon as we can. That way we can get it clean, maintain our moisture level, come in at about three-ish weeks, start drilling wheat. You're not a front seat puppy. I suppose while we're on a crop tour, we should stop and check the corn. So I'm not gonna walk out there because everything is absolutely soaked from the dew. But a lot of you guys might not think this is good corn, but for us, this is an absolute home run. I personally have never seen corn this good. Um, we don't get a lot of rain. It is what it is. It kind of got stripped from hail is kind of what it looks like. But anyway, we don't get a lot of rain. An average corn yield for us is about 50 to 75 probably. I would like to say we could be looking more towards the triple digit range with this stuff. Um, it kind of got us in a bind. Some of these plants were definitely trying to push out a third year. You know, we got some bugs. Here's another one. Might have to come make an application of insecticide. Because there is earworms too. But they're already inside the ear. So there's nothing you can really do about it. I'm trying to find one with three ears on it. I guess this is kind of one. One, two, three. Don't want that. This third ear doesn't make anything. But it takes nutrients away from these two. You can make two okay ears. You really can't ever make three okay years. You probably could if we'd fertilize for it, but we don't because our expectations of yield around here are not high. But anyway, this is a great corn crop. Everything looks good everywhere. I've yet to see a bad cornfield. There's some bad stands, but overall, I think we're gonna be very pleased with our corn yield. And a lot of you might wonder, well, why did we plant corn Corn is a rotation crop for us, it's not a cash crop. We do make money on it, but it's not the goal. The goal is to control your grasses, your sandbers, your candy grass, whatever it may be, stuff that you cannot control in grain sort of, because that's our money maker. It allows us to do continuous crop, but still have a mode of action where we can kill grasses. That way it's not as bad in the sand or in the grain sorghum. The grain sorghum, there is varieties that are herbicide tolerant. It's a quizala flop tolerant variety which can control grass. But the trick is you can't plant it back to back. It's gotta wait a year. That's why we go corn milo, corn milo. Otherwise everything west of town where it's not continuous crop and we have a fallow period in there going back to wheat, it doesn't matter. We go wheat, milo, fallow, wheat, milo, fallow. So in three years you get two crops and on the east side of town where it is continuous crop sand, you get corn milo, corn milo. So you get a crop every year. You see all those gnats? Back in the R4060 today, we're gonna do some seam and spraying. I have 104 gallons to run out and then we're gonna switch and do some stubble work. If the winds switch and it's blowing the correct direction to be able to border some Milo, that way it pushes the chemical away so I need to spray this out, and then I'll run back to the trailer to mix up, and then we'll travel 20 miles over to the wheat stubble field, look similar to this, and we will do some paraquat work. Then we'll come back and finish seed spray on this field right here. 
gonna be a big day, a lot of mixes, different mixes, road travel, whatever it may be. We'll get her done. Still quite a few dark spots out here, but it is what it is. We gotta keep going. Those weeds are gonna get big and we need to be drilling here shortly, so this is the only time we have to get it done. That's what the sea and spray map looks like. We are running green on the ground. So all it's doing is sensing anything green out there in contrast to the fallow field. And that's what it's gonna be spraying. For areas like this that we run, this system works great. Problem. This system works great. We use it a lot, especially with our fallow ground. This is capable of doing green on green spray and I did do a lot of application on corn with it this year. I don't know what that is. Probably that red nozzle right there. About guarantee ya. Got loaded with the summer fallow mix, or excuse me, got loaded with the wee stubble mix. Now we're heading over to the next field. I'll show you the mixing later. Time is of the essence because the wind is gonna switch here shortly, so I just needed to get loaded and get gone. This will not be seeing spray work. This is broadcast because you'll see when we get there, but there's weeds on basically 100% of the field. It's a mud puddle. So we got rain probably three days ago, four days ago out here. Was not as much as the other side of town where we got two and a half inches on the other side. I think we were more around a half inch, eight tenths area. Now you know exactly what I mean about it is not a sand spray job. Normally I'd like to get in here about three weeks earlier, but it's just been wet. And this is a 40 acre field, so we have a highway on one side and a Milo field on the other. So finding a calm enough day to spray, but still the wind blowing south is hard. But today is the day. We'll get unfolded, I'll back up and get my boom primed because I do have a different chemical in the boom. And then we'll get going. So with Paraquat, you want good coverage and high pressure force it down in the canopy and make sure you get the entire wheat covered. So we're running 20 gallon an acre, 80 pounds of pressure with John Deere 3D nozzles. It's probably on the side of a small droplet, but it does an excellent job on contact herbicides. Well, it did not take long to square up a 40 acre field with this machine. I think that took maybe 30 minutes at the most. I've got just one little sliver in the end because it is not square. No big deal. Have a little extra, we'll go find a spot to stick that, touch up a couple edges. There's always wheat stubble that needs to be sprayed. Even when you just got done spraying, hit it again. It will green up eventually, especially with Gramoxone. It's not a fix-all, it's a save yourself, then come in and put down your residuals later. That's about the majority of it.
morning. So it's another day in the sprayer. Today we're seeing spraying again. This is my last field on the west side of town. After this, we're gonna move east. Moving east is about a 40 mile trip. Shouldn't take too long, just one sprayer and then a spray trailer. And we'll be going over there. Hopefully by this afternoon, we'll be rolling. This field here is a half section. Doing tea and spray work, as you can tell. Not hitting that much. Uh, those dark lines in the wheel tracks, that is fall back. It is dusty, but I'm just doing life to save work. So if it over applies, it's not the end of the world. We just gotta keep moving because we need to get some acres covered. I'm going slow how it is to keep the dust down. If I go any slower, I really will not get anything done. So we'll just roll with sometimes having a little fall back here and there. No big deal. There is a thick area up here. This is why we are spraying the field. It's a bottom that runs through. It's all volunteer Milo. If the rest of the field looked like that, that I was videotaping earlier, we probably wouldn't spray it. But as you can see here, there's a lot more acres being sprayed. I think in the end, we're gonna cover about 40% of this field. We'll get all this volunteer taken care of. Any sandbirds that might be out there as well. And we will move on. Eighty-six gallons left. I've got a fifteen hundred gallon trailer sitting in the corner with a hot load mixed. Got dropped off to the field to me. That way I could finish without having to run back to the spray trailer. Whenever we get to the ends, I always like to stay on the same track, keep it from powdering up multiple spots. Follow the tram line to the trailer. We added a front fill. Did not come with the sprayer, so we just tapped into the main line underneath. Then you can fill from the front without having to flip a switch on the side and let the valve open and just fill straight into the tank. Be a wreck if I tap the boom on the front of the trailer. Just like so. Film, we'll go and take a look at the scene spray system so now this is a John Deere scene spray system it was not factory installed it's a kit that you can put on afterwards as long as you have an exact supply machine might have to come clean the cameras not too bad not great but so these are the cameras they control four nozzles these are the nozzles on the back so we're using our B's because it is a 45 degree angle tip back I think it's actually a 38 to be exact, but it needs that tip back angle. That way you could buy yourself some time before the camera sees the weed and the chemical hits it. So it sprays it at a back angle. It just does a better job with the seeing spray. So there's a camera all the way down the boom, every four nozzles. This system does green on green and brown on green. We have done some green on green. We did some corn spraying with it. Actually did our post apply glyphosate and glufosinate application with it. Did a phenomenal job. We definitely saw a lot of savings. Plus, then you don't put herbicide on the corn so it doesn't have to digest it. I think in the end, it's a lot better deal. So that's pretty much it. This is also our first year ever running floaters. I never realized how nice they were until we got them. They're 710s. Could be a little bigger. Not too bad though. It's nice to see our plowed ground. We're only leaving a track like that. With skinnies, we'd be leaving probably a six to eight inch track, which when you go back and drill wheat, you definitely see the difference driving through those tracks because you just don't get wheat out. It's too deep. scenery I was on the phone a little bit 
exciting things very exciting things i am excited i'm sure you guys will be too hopefully so i didn't record my last field but we got to go round up some cows now we're working cows tomorrow so we got to go push them into the corral get them caught we'll sort in the morning and we will work tomorrow so i'll take you guys with the roundup process and that might be all for today's video so we won't be spraying until tomorrow no big deal we'll finish up no problem i got all the edges done so all it was is middle of fields that i got to finish up but like I said, I was on the phone so I couldn't record anything. Important phone calls.